Hey, good Monday afternoon to you, Parkview Baptist Church. It is Thanksgiving week 2020. Uh, it's hard to believe that it's already here. Uh, this time of year has just once again rushed us uh, very quickly. And uh, I hope you're in uh, store for a great week with your family and your friends and whatever it is that you get to do uh, for Thanksgiving week. I want to do a couple things with you today. This is coming to you early this week on purpose. Uh, a couple of announcements for you, then a word of thanks. Uh, and then hopefully a word of encouragement for you today with what just the Lord's been showing me as I've tried to review the year and looking forward to the year ahead. First of all, the announcements. Number one, we will be meeting tomorrow night for our prayer meeting. That is Tuesday the 24th instead of Wednesday. Uh, we just want to back things away a little bit from the Thanksgiving holiday, knowing that some people will be traveling uh, maybe uh, to and from uh, places, and that will help you come maybe, uh, if at all possible, tomorrow evening, 6 o'clock in the sanctuary for prayer time. Jamie will also be uh, leading the students across the way in, uh, in the youth center uh, as well. And so please remember that. Look forward to seeing any of you who can join us for prayer uh, tomorrow night. The second thing is also a calendar event. Uh, as you know, we do our discipleship groups now uh, in lots of places on Sunday nights, but periodically we come back together for worship. And so December the 6th, Sunday night, 6 p.m., we will be in the sanctuary to worship together as a church uh, with as many as we can you know, sit, sitting socially distanced, maybe some across the way in the uh, in the youth center. But if you could put that on your calendar, we're going to try to begin to celebrate Christmas. Uh, we have to take a couple things off our calendar this year, but come as we sing uh, to our Lord uh, in the Christmas spirit, as we talk about Christmas from the Word of God, and just have a good time together. So remember those, if you will, uh, on the calendar. Tomorrow night prayer versus Wednesday this week, and then December 6th for evening worship here at six o'clock. A quick, a quick word of thanks to you. I just want to say thank you to the entire church for such a, a wonderful year. It is a Thanksgiving season. I am in a Thanksgiving kind of reflective uh, mood and mode uh, right now. And as I have reflected on so much that's happened since I have become a part of, Lori and I have become a part of uh, the Parkview family, I am blown away by uh, your goodness and God's goodness to us in that. Every single card you've ever written me, I have read in full. Every email, every text, uh, every encounter has been precious to me because all I ever get out of any of that is you filling me up and my wife up with encouragement. Um, you might have thought the Lord brought us here to be your pastor because y'all needed a pastor. Well, that may be true. I'll let y'all figure that out. But I'll tell you what I think the, God, uh, the Lord has done that God uh, has been so good to us on is that the Lord knew that Lori and I needed a wonderful church family like this, and so he brought you to us, is what I believe. And so we just want to say thank you. Uh, we had a chance yesterday to spend some time with uh, many of our prayer partners, not all of them, but have a lunch with them. Uh, and so many folks are precious to us. The pastor's prayer partners uh, are really very precious to us. Those who pray in uh, our worship services as our watchmen on the wall, prayer warriors that are lifting up the entire church, not just myself and the pa uh, other pastoral team, but everyone. So I say thank you, Kathy Klein, for your leadership in our prayer, our prayer warriors, our, our prayer partners. You sacrifice so much and you work so hard in the, in the discipline of prayer on my behalf, and I say thank you. Discipleship group leaders, everyone I go to, I still have not made it to all of our uh, different groups, but they just blow me away. And, this, and last night was no different. Uh, Luis led a phenomenal group at his house, uh, and the conversation was just very rich around uh, the necessity, the authority, the inerrancy, the infallibility, uh, the clarity, all these things about the Word of God. What a precious doctrine that we need to hold on to concerning the Bible. Uh, and its authority in our lives. So, so thank you to all of our discipleship group leaders, our host homes. Those of you who host, some of you are the spouses of the leader, and I know you work hard to prepare your home and, and everyone that goes. And I hear so many wonderful things all the time, from just reports from our leaders to testimonies of uh, group members. I just want to say thank you. And I know so many of you participate uh, by praying for me, and you're not at one of those official title pastor prayer partners or what have you. I say thank you because you don't require a title. You just love me, and you pray for me, and you pray for your church. And so thank you for at so many different levels for what you do for me, for my family, for Lori, 
uh, and for your church family. And so I just want you to hear my heart today uh, on that. Let me encourage you with something here for the final moments uh, of, of this recording. Uh, the Lord's had me in various places uh, since yesterday, throughout today, last night, this morning, uh, in the Bible. And it's been very, very encouraging as I've just considered a lot of things. Because as we look back on this year, we go, wow, what a year. And and one of the things that I kind of summarized as I look back at things, and I even start to look ahead at what's coming in the days uh, before us, is that God is the God of the most unlikely. God is the God of the most unlikely. I mean, all you have to do is read the scripture and begin to go from story after story after story. And then co just consider history and consider your own life and, and our life together as a church that God is the God of the most unlikely. Now, if you say, well, Mike, what does that really mean? What are you trying to say to us on that? Let me give you the definition of this word unlikely and kind of go through a couple of thoughts that the Lord has brought me to uh, today. The definition of the word unlikely is little prospect of success. God is the God of what appears to be having little prospect of success. Another way to define the word unlikely is unpromising or improbable. God is the God of what seems to be the most unpromising or improbable. Or a final definition of the word unlikely is it's likely to fail. What God is the God of is what so often looks like to the world and, and sometimes even us is that he's the God of something that's likely to fail. It just feels that way sometimes. It looks that way. 2020 started with such great promise. I mean, my heart was full. My heart is still full today but it was more full at that time in a different way. And then things just shifted and changed completely. We don't need to keep rehashing COVID-19, but so many things changed the outlook of 2020, where today I'm reminded again of the fact that God is the God of the most unlikely. Things that look like there's no prospect of success, that it's likely to fail, that it looks uh, unpromising and improbable in so many different ways. And I think about this as I kind of search the scriptures. I was in 1 Kings this morning. I was in the book of Revelation, considering all kinds of uh, 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 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and what God does to shame the wise through foolish things and through foolish people and fool what seems to be foolish ways to our, our world. But think about this. God has forever and always uh, used the most unlikely people in the most unlikely places in the midst of the most unlikely circumstances who have oftentimes the most unlikely resources during the most unlikely time. And here's one of the kickers, utilizing oftentimes the most unlikely strategy. So many times when you think about the strategy that God employed to do his uh, will, just makes you scratch your head and go, wow, this looks like it has little prospect of success. Think about Gideon, for example. Gideon started out with 32,000 men, and God said that's too many to go to war with. And he broke it all the way down to 300. It's like, whoa, what are you talking about? That just seems like it's doomed to failure. It just seems very unpromising and uh, improbable when you consider the odds at that point. So God is always using the unlikely people, places, circumstances, resources, the time in history, utilizing unlikely strategies and methods, but God's doing a great, great work. Now, I want you to think about this. I'm going to flip it now, all right? That even though God is using so many things that are so unlikely, the result of God at work, the result of when God gets involved is he creates the most likely results, victories, conversions, heroes, and he just puts together a phenomenal result that makes everybody come back with incredible praise of him. Now, I want you to think about a couple of songs. I printed off the lyrics because uh, I need a little bit of help here uh, on that, and I'm not going to sing, praise God, uh, for you today, but these are a couple of songs that were written this year I mean, and really put out this year. The first one is one that you might remember uh, uh, named Waymaker. And it goes, uh, some of the lyrics go like this, speaking and singing to God. You are way maker. You are the miracle worker. You are the promise keeper. You are the light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are the healer. You are healing every heart. 
You are turning lives around. You are the mender of hearts and you are mending every heart. And then in the chorus, I know some of you know this song called Waymaker. He says this, even when I don't see it, you're still working because you never stop working. Even when I can't feel it, you're still working because you never stop working. There's nothing this year that's kept God from working. There's nothing this year that has thrown him off or gotten him off track. It might feel like the most unlikely circumstances we could ever imagine in our day, but God is still today at this moment creating the most likely outcomes that are in accordance to his perfect will. Another song is called Graves in the Gardens. And uh, part of it uh, talks about how God is the God of the mountain. He is the God of the valley. There's not a place where your mercy and grace won't find me again. There's nothing better than you. He goes on to say, oh, there's nothing better than you. You turn mourning into dancing, beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory. You are the only one who can. You turn shame into glory. You turn graves into gardens. You turn bones into armies and seas into highways. Why? Because you are the only one who can. Listen, I am so excited about the days ahead for us at Parkview. We have seen some really wonderful things happen this year. You have just embraced so much, and I know it's been a challenge from uh, time to time at what we need to be doing. And I believe COVID-19 is one of those times in history that could bring about truly now a seismic shift in how church is going to be done in the days ahead. It doesn't mean it's going to feel good necessarily. It's not going to be what we've always known. But listen, I have thoughts. I have plans. I am praying for the year of 2021. Uh, I cannot wait to share some of those things with you. Uh, already having some conversations with some people here and there. Cannot wait to come public with a lot of that. And again, I believe God's going to take the most unlikely of everything and create everything that he wants out of it because he is the only one who can. He's the way maker. These songs just get me fired up. This morning I was uh, reading some text messages from various people sending me encouragement. I'm trying to send them, I'm trying to send them encouragement back. You, you know how it goes on your phone. Sometimes you're carrying on multiple conversations. And in the background on my computer over here was the song put out by Passion. And it was just saying, God is so good. We've sung it a couple of times over the last few weeks. God is so good. He's so good to me. He's so good to us. And in the midst of all the unlikely, the all the unlikely that's around us already and that will still surround us in the days ahead, I cannot wait to see what God is going to do because he's going to keep doing great and mighty and wonderful things that brings him glory. Not me, not any of you, but just him. He's going to make the name of Jesus more famous than it already is as uh, he makes himself known to our community. Can't wait to see you uh, hopefully tomorrow night for prayer meeting, maybe December for uh, worship celebrations on Sunday and Sunday night the 6th and certainly throughout the new year. And uh, can't wait to uh, talk to all of you soon. Ho hope you have a great Thanksgiving, especially if I don't get to see you this week. And uh, don't eat too much. See you soon. Bye-bye.